You're with the Breaker Leggers. And we are once again in London at the Almeida Theatre to see the Tennessee Williams play Summer and Smoke. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's break a leg or leg it. <laughs> Join our Lego community and let us know about any theatre you are seeing. Feel free to comment below about this show or any other show you are excited about. Yeah, we love to bring the latest from Theatre Land directly to you. So make sure you hit subscribe and bang the bell now. Hit subscribe. So, Summer and Smoke. Yeah. A Tennessee Williams play. It is indeed. We've seen some other Tennessee Williams plays and we've reviewed for those, including... The Glass Menagerie. Yeah, which was great. And Cat on a Hot tin roof which well have a look <laughs> yeah have a look um although that's also um has it just had a live broadcast yeah it has it was on the nt live not so long ago in fact so even if you didn't get down to london you may still have seen it in your local cinema now summer and smoke here at the almeida is being directed by rebecca frecknell um rebecca is has well, she was a resident or associate director on inc here actually i loved ink yeah, again it was you great. can see our review for that just there you can and it's a story about love loneliness and self-destruction things that tennessee tends to do quite well really uh, if there's a breakdown involved then just look at tennessee he'll he'll give you a breakdown won't he the cast includes almeida favorite matthew needham um who has been in three shows here in the past 12 months and we've seen him four times in the past year. Yes, we saw him in a great production over in Shakespeare's Globe, which is much ado about nothing. Here we saw him in The Treatment. Twilight Zone. And also now this. Yeah, and also... That was it, that's the third. Is that it? I think this is the third, right? Yeah. <laughs> we think This is the third. Uh, yeah, because this is going to be the fourth time we've seen him. That makes sense, also doesn't it? Math. The- yeah, Matt. Also in the cast is... Patsy Ferron. Now, Patsy Ferron um, was recently over at the Royal Court starring in a one-woman play called My Mum's a Twat. Lovely. Yes. And she has also just been over to uh, Mississippi to research the role as this is where that this play... That is where this play is set. So, wow. busy lady. Let's now, see if it pays off. Mm, Runtime. Two hours and 35 minutes? Yes, including a 15 minute interval, which is where we're going to see you next. So we've come to the interval of Summer and Smoke here at the Elmwood Theatre, which means it is time for the Breaker Leggers 30 second interval breakdown. So, what do you think so far? Um, so far, I think it's quite beautiful. Like, there's some beautiful performances, some beautiful staging, beautiful use of music, um, beautiful story that's unfolding. I really care about. How about you? Yeah, it's gripping, is what it is. You say it's beautiful. It's actually quite gritty. It's actually rather edgy, um, and it's being portrayed beautifully, especially by Patty Ferron. I'm enjoying it, and I'm excited to see what's coming up next act. We've come to the end of Summer and Smoke here at the Almeida Theatre, so what did you make of that? I thought it was great. I thought it was uh, the Almeida back on form after a couple of, um, what should we call them? I don't want to go as far as to say it's turkey, but uh, a couple of false starts um, for the last season. This is a definite strong you know, first of 2018 production, and it was compelling, enthralling, and just really pretty as well, and emotional. What did you think? Yeah, I've got to say, in terms of the blips, there's specifically two. I think the treatment was one of them against another, in our opinion. This one, um, taking a classic and giving it the Almeida theatre treatment in a way. Yeah, it's um, definitely had, it's got an Islington touch, hasn't it, about it? It has. They, they just, with this production, they've just stripped everything back. So it is just about, I felt, just the actors in the space and their relationships, which um, was a big key thing with Mary Stewart, I felt here. Um, also echoes of being barefoot on the ground, so it's not as if they're really grounded and um, just connected and rooted. Um, no superfluous sets, it 
it's, it's literally just about them and the raw emotion in um, Tennessee Williams' writing. He's such a good writer, um, but in the wrong hands I think it would be disastrous. This cast and this director absolutely knows and seem to understand exactly what um, Mr. Williams was driving at in his text that he put forward to this piece. Yeah, and whilst a lot of elements have come together in this production to make a really interesting and visually exciting show, I think it has to come back to those performances and particularly two key performances and that is um, the performance given by Patsy Ferran and the performance given by Matthew Needham as this sort of, um, what would you call them, unfortunate, at the unrequited, wrong, time. It's almost wrong this, yeah. place, wrong it's time love like... story. It's an awkwardness about them. I mean, I, I don't know if someone smokes. This is a new one to me um, in terms of the story. You may know it, um, but it's almost like they are destined to be certain people are destined to be together but if it's not the right time then it's not going to work and it just wasn't the right time for them no and, and it that... seemed to be that one of them could sort of accept that and the other one certainly couldn't accept it and this conflict of emotion um, was really explosive almost on stage in a, in a subtle in a muted way it wasn't particularly violent and it wasn't particularly um, you know sc uh, screams of angst it wasn't that sort of emotion it was a softer bubble of it but when it did break through I thought it was just so moving in a lot of respects and so exciting and exhilarating as an audience member because of the strength of Patsy and of Matthew in delivering yes. that sex. Okay, so let's go on to Patsy Ferrell first. Yes. Um, I thought she was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I would predict that she is going to go on to some pretty big stuff. I think the word fantastic isn't so isn't super uh, so not enough. big enough. It isn't. No. She is She's a force to be reckoned with. She is going to be the, the name on everybody's lips. It's going to take one big main West End house show to put her up there with the, the great and the goods of British theatre right now. And if she gets the right part in the right house, she, she's, she's a future Olivier Award winner. That's it. So. I'll go so far, stick my neck on the line right now and I'll say. I think TV will snap her up. Yes. I, I film, film would snap her up. Like, her performance was so intimate, yet so big for the space. Yeah, I, I, I was just hooked on everything. It was delivered so well. Yeah. wasn't just such a joy to watch. I couldn't take my eyes off of her no, for a lot of the, of the whole show. Frighteningly natural and frustratingly brilliant because, you know, there wasn't a moment where she did, she, that she slipped up or the energy dropped and I'm thinking, you can't be this good girl. Calm down. And but yet, she is that good. And it was an absolute character as well. It's yes. a full character. But the physicality of her as well. Not just the words that, and that she spoke, but how she portrayed them and how she used her body to make those words come yeah. to life was an incredible the feat. dialect in terms of dialect coaching and the accents were spot on mm -hmm. as well and, and the the range of emotion within the character you know she found her moments to play with it she, it wasn't self-indulgent it was just true and realistic and fantastic yes Matthew Needham yeah Matthew Needham now uh, there's been a bit of I've heard some like rumblings under the saying gosh he seems to be in everything here at the Almeida like what's he got over that casting director but to be honest with you it's the right bloody man for the job nine times out of ten like I, I've got to say everything we've seen him in, every role we've seen him in and to be fair I think almost every production we've seen him in he's been the strongest player and he is bloody talented and he is bloody natural and he seems like a bloody nice bloke and I can't wait to see him in the next thing we see him in. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter if you're talking about casting. If you're the right person and you do a bloody good job, then 
who cares if you've been here a number of times. I wouldn't want to see anybody else in the park. He brought a lovely youthfulness to this. Uh, I think you see him on a massive journey as well from um, both of us being very young. And I felt that kind of immaturity and then the kind of adolescence drinking and that wild party side and then becoming more mature. Just a lovely um, kind arc. of arc for him as a journey. And I thought he played that really well. And there's lovely chemistry and lovely, lovely tension between him and the other cast members. He's always he solid, but this is a great role for him. Um, also, I want to say the music was fantastic. Um, and the music was done by composer was Angus McRae. Yeah, there are nine pianos. Is it nine? Yeah, There's nine, nine pianos, pianos, but a cast stage. of eight. Yes. Um, and they're all playing. It's, it's just really nice underscoring to accompany what is going on, the tension, the building moments, and it's also kind of amplified really well. Whoever did the sound design did a really good job as well, putting on the spot here. Yeah, sound, sound design, design by Carolyn Downing. Some fantastic sound design in there. Great. Lighting as well was Lighting fantastic. Lighting was beautifully atmospheric and alive at really key moments. Um, Lighted states shocked and shook and certainly added huge amounts to the scenes and, and that's Lee Curran. Yeah and implemented into the set which was just a, a range of platforms with pianos mm -hmm. but lighting inside the pianos yeah. as well. Throughout the space, it's absolutely lovely. beautiful. Um, Rebecca Frecknell as direction, do you know what, she's nailed it here, she's absolutely She's just got it right. She's got hold of this text. She stripped it right back. She said, this is a beautiful story, well written. What can we do to make, bring the most out of it? And actually, less is more, and it's working perfectly. Yes. Um, now, uh, a number of the other characters paid multiple parts. I think at least two parts for most of them. Yes. Um, it took a tiny bit to kind of work out, oh, OK, there being more than one person. Um, but there were certain tricks they used that kind of kept us on board with who they were once it got going. Yes. That that was slightly jarring and did take a while to warm, but it, I, I was fine by the end of it. You know, it made sense keep the keep it as a small company. That was absolutely fine. But yeah, a little while to get into the groove with that one. Um, also, I would mention um, Michaela Kennan as voice coach, just because the accents were so great. Yeah, they were great, because well you're talking done. about somewhere, is it Mississippi? Yeah, the Deep South, I mean, that's that's hard. You can go cliche really easy with that one. I know I certainly could, I mean, all of my accents sound Jamaican, but I would try, and I'm sure I would sound cliche, but they didn't at all, they sound natural. We, we got lucky sitting next to an American lady, and I made a point of asking her what she thought of the accents, and she said, oh, they, they're fine, they're great. Um, and I also asked her about Tennessee Williams. He is, I'm trying to think of a British playwright that is equivalent equivalent of like Tennessee Williams. Like a classic yeah. British. I get the feeling that he's held in really high regard as considered to be one of the best American playwrights of all time. So to, to be sitting with an American person, find out that they were okay and happy with what was happening was a real reassurance. I think it's quite a sacred thing maybe to an American audience. And uh, it was really nice to have that alternative opinion because, you know, we're, we're Brits. Uh, we've sort of seen a bit of Williams, but not a huge amount. So what do we know? Um, but hey, can you think of any kind of British playwrights that are kind of an equivalent? If so, yeah. comment below and let us know. What do you think? Yeah. Well, for Summer and Smoke here at the Almeida, it's about time we gave you some legs. For this piece, we are going to give... Four legs for this piece, a really um, enjoyable concept, seeing a piece like this just told in a completely different way with a stellar, strong cast. Yeah, it's it's not perfect in so much as, the, do you know what, the subject matter for me wasn't totally resonant, I didn't, I, I, I wasn't sort of, I'm not coming, I'm not taking anything away from from, from the theatre. Had a great time in there. Is it something I'm going to be thinking about and mulling over in a month's time? Probably not. But for those two and a half hours here at the Almeida, one of our favourite London venues, it was a great time. Yeah, definitely worth coming by to see the performances and how a piece can be done in such a modern way. Um, just so clear, crisp, um, just beautiful. Yeah, no frills. No frills. 
focus on the text. That's what we thought. That's just what we thought. Yeah, what did you think? Have you seen the show or have you seen anything else here at the Almeida? We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, please let us know. Leave your comments below. We are the Breaker Leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.